as pure tall and pure dwarf or we can say homozygous tall and homozygous dwarf. So that is what it is talking about means. So here we have the gametes formed. Okay, so these are the gametes of this particular one and these are the gametes. So the 22 pair of the chromosomes, they are the autosomes and one pair it is allosomes or the sex chromosome that we have. So in total, how... <laughs>
one homozygous green and two heterozygous yellow. That is what we received over here. Next, so we are going to talk about the law of segregation because with that law we understood that the dominant one could express itself in both F1 and F2 generation more properly. Okay, now talking about the segregation term over here. What is segregation? It refers to the term like separation. Okay, so for an example, if we talk about the alleles present in the genes. So for example, these are the two alleles that is present in the gene expressing for the tall height of the plant, right? So here these alleles, they are not always desired to remain together. They would segregate, they would separate from each other at the time of the gamete formation. Okay, so allele or the genes, they remain together and they segregate at the time of gamete formation. Means when they are in the form of the gene, they would be together. But when the time comes around, like there has to be gamete formation done in order to conduct the particular cross or the fusion of the things. So what is going to happen? They would segregate. They would not be coming with the other one. So if we talk about the same here again, in order to understood the same, here we have one of the dominant trait that is the yellow seed and the green seed, the recessive trait over here. So parental generation, capital Y, capital Y and small y, small y. Okay, so they both are in the homozygous condition. We can say that they are pure for the particular contrasting characteristic. Now we are going to conduct the cross. So in order to conduct the cross, we need to have the gametes of the same. So this capital Y, it results in the formation of the two types of the gametes, which would be having the capital Y itself. While if we talk about here, it would be resulting in the formation of the gametes having the small y. Okay, now if we conduct the cross, so this is what we receive when we cross this one with this one. So here we have got the combination number one. Next, if we talk about this is what we receive. Next, if we talk about this is what we receive. Next, if we talk about this is what we receive. So if we see over here in the F1 generation, all the particular seeds, they would be heterozygous yellow. Okay, so if you see that this capital Y, it is not always desired to be assisting this particular capital Y because here if you see the new combination is made. Okay, in all these four conditions, the new combination is to be made over here. Now, if we talk about the F1 generation, so again we are going to conduct the cross of the same self-pollination that is what we are going to done or inbreeding we can say. So here again we have the yellow seed, what sort of yellow seed it is? Heterozygous yellow seed it is. So here we have the gametes formed. Okay, so these are the gametes of this particular one and these are the gametes of this particular one. Now when we are going to conduct the cross of the same, we receive the F2 generation. Now if you see, crossing this one with this capital Y, we get the YY. So again, the parental kind of the gene, it is to be received. Okay, next if we talk about the new combination, heterozygous condition, it is to be received. Next if we conduct the cross, this is what we receive, heterozygous condition. Again, we receive the parental one. So this one, and this one shows that although these alleles, they got segregated, but now they united again to show the same type of the alleles that was found in the parent generation. Okay, so students, we can conclude that the alleles, they do not mix in the hybrids or the non-mixing of the alleles occur, okay? Means if we talk about during the meiosis or during the formation of the gametes, why are the process of meiosis? What happens is that the alleles, they have their individuality well maintained. Now, moving on to the next one, this law is also known as law of purity of gametes certainly, okay? I hope you were able to understand the same. Moving on to the next law or the last one, that is law of independent assortment. Now, according to Mendel, when he conducted the dihybrid cross, so in that he took the two pair of the contrasting characteristics. So despite of taking the two pair of the contrasting characteristics, what he received was like that of the monohybrid 
across okay means here again despite the two contrasting pairs were there they got segregated independent of each other so let's just conduct the same again when individuals differing in two or more than two pairs of the contrasting characters they are to be crossed the inheritance of any one pair is not to be affected by the presence of the other let's understand that so two different alleles the first one seed color yellow color is dominant and green is recessive seed shape round shape is dominant and wrinkled shape is recessive so students this is the pair number 1 and this is the pair number 2 okay means this is the characteristics the contrasting characteristics that we are going to refer over here now if we talk about here what he did was he kind of cross the particular yellow and round seed with that of the green and wrinkled one this is the parent generation so let's see how does it happen this is what he received in the f1 generation this is the hybrid or we can say it is heterozygous yellow round seed okay so what is it heterozygous yellow round here we are talking about the f1 hybrid okay this one is f1 okay so here it is yellow and round seeds so if you see the yellow and brown they are a pair over here they are the pair of the characteristics that he referred and wrinkled and green it is another pair okay so despite of being in pair if we just see the resultant of that is to be done in the f2 generation means when we just conduct the self pollination of this one so these are the particular sets of the gametes that would be formed over here capital y would be having a pair with the capital r then capital y with the small r this is what we see over here in this whole small y capital r small y small r so this is what we see so we have represented the male and the female part like this okay now if you see that yellow and round how many were they they were nine that we received but if we talk about the new combination that we received was this one like this is yellow and wrinkled seeds it is not round this is the new combination that he received next if we talk about it is the particular green and round this one that you see okay while if you see this wrinkled and green one or yellow and round one this is the old one so despite of being present together they just assorted independently resulting into the formation of a new variant okay so not only the gametes they segregate independent of each other also the characteristics they also segregate independent of each other means one characteristic is not going to rely on the other and it would be carried forward to the next generation okay it may occur that some of the new combinations could be formed certainly moving on to the next one that we see is the particular ratio so this is the ratio 9 ratio 3 ratio 3 ratio 1 so in that this one and this one is for the parental kind of the thing but these two are the newly ones that we received certainly means green and round yellow and wrinkled these are the newly ones okay now if we talk about the next topic that we are going to discuss over here it is going to be the sex determination now what is sex determination well students if we talk about in general so the organisms they contain the particular sets of the chromosome like if we talk about in humans there are the two types of the chromosomes the first type is the autosomes okay so in humans how many autosomes are there there are about this 22 pair of the autosomes present and if we talk about in humans the allosomes or the sex chromosomes which are for the determination of the gender of the individual they are only one in pair okay so the 22 pair of the chromosomes they are the autosomes and one pair it is allosomes or the sex chromosome that we have so in total how many pair of chromosomes do the human have 
23 pair or we can write down it as 46 number of the chromosome. Okay, so either of the way we can define the same. So the sex chromosomes, they are the ones which are responsible for the determination of the gender of the new progeny, like whether it would be male or female. Okay, now if we talk about in the humans, the one pair that we are talking about, the allosomes. So the chromosomes that are depicted over here, it is of the male parent. Okay, so if you see the 23rd pair here, X and Y, it is to be found in the males. Okay, so students, we are going to learn in detail about the same. Let's just understand. So what are the factors responsible for the sex determination? Now, if you see in some animals, the temperature at which the fertilized eggs, they are kept, they decide the gender. For example, if we take an example for an instance over here about the particular turtle over here. So, when the eggs are incubated, incubated below 28 degrees Celsius. So, it results in the birth of the male. While when they are incubated above 31 degree Celsius, so it results in the birth of the female. Also, students in some of the organisms, it is believed that at the lower temperature, females are born and at the high temperature, males are born. So, it differs from organism to organism. Okay. Now, so in some animals, the temperature at which the fertilized egg, they are kept, they decide the gender of the newly born one. Now, genetic. Like in some animals, like the humans, the gender of the individual, it is determined by a pair of chromosomes, which are to be called as the sex chromosomes over here. Now, now, if we talk about two important points that we need to note about the determination of the gender of the individual, birth of male and female child has equal percent because X and Y chromosome, they are produced in equal number in case of the males and it all depends either the sperm with X or Y fuses with the egg containing the X chromosome. Means if we talk about in case of the females, always and always X chromosomes they are formed, okay, while it is the male which play the deciding role in determination of the gender of the new one. Why so? Because the male they carry either X or the Y chromosome in their particular gametes. Okay, in the female gamete, that is the egg, it is always going to be the X chromosome. While in the male gamete, that is the sperm, it could be either X or Y, which decides the birth of male is going to happen or the female is going to happen. So, if we talk about when the fertilization of the sperm containing X chromosome is to be done with the egg. So, it results in the birth of the female child having the XX chromosome as the 23rd pair of chromosome. While if we talk about when the sperm containing the Y chromosome, it fertilizes with the egg containing the X chromosome, it results in the birth of the male child having the XY as the 23rd pair of the chromosome certainly. Now, students, next thing, the birth of male and female child, hence it depends on Y or X chromosome of the male, female always produces the X chromosome as I told you. So, have no significant role in the sex determination of the offspring. Means if it is asked that who plays the deciding role in determining the gender of the newborn, so it is the chromosome that is coming from the male, it plays an important role in deciding the gender of the newly born one. Okay, so if we see, let's say that there are the human parents, mother and father is there. Okay, so mother is going to produce the 23rd pair as the XX and it is going to produce the father, it is going to produce the XY. Okay, now if we just conduct the cross of the same, so when this X get crossed with this one, it gets the birth of the female child. But if the gamete containing X chromosome, it gets fused with the gamete containing Y chromosome coming from the father, so it results in the birth of the boy child. Next, if we talk about it again gets fused with the X chromosome containing from the mother, with that of the X chromosome containing from the father, it results in the birth of the girl child 
again next if we see lastly again when the x and y will fuse so it results in the birth of the male child so here out of these four young ones we see that there are the 50% chances of the birth of female to that of the 50% chances of the male so we can write down that 50% male and female have the chances of getting birth